and we're back again. This is, I think, the fifth episode um, of this uh, uh, tutorial uh, to run a Cardano stake pool on Raspberry Pis. So far, um, we have uh, done a lot. Uh, we have booted and prepared our Raspberry Pi. We have in flashed and installed the SSD card. We have updated the BIOS and firmware, as well as, as uh, updated the configuration of the boot of the SSD card so that we can boot from the SSD without any the micro SD. We have installed Docker, we have built the Cartano node, and now finally we're gonna interact with the blockchain for the very first time. What we will be doing today is to start the Cardano node in relay mode, and we will finally, finally start to download the blockchain. Just for one second, I want you, uh, because we will be doing everything with Docker, I just want you to realize a quick thing. Despite the fact that we can use Docker, and Docker, the containers are ephemeral, it means that when they fail, exit, whatever, they are destroyed and nothing is left. What we will be doing is to, as I mentioned a couple of times before in the past, we will use the mounting technology uh, or volumes as a way of making the container in which the Cardano node is running to save the blockchain on the actual Raspberry Pi. So that if by any chance the Cardano node crashes, we have to update it or anything else, we will not have to download the full blockchain again because as you will see very soon, it will take hours and hours and hours. Right, so now, without further ado, let's get into the instructions of this episode. So we are here. Great. And this is again the uh, page of our um, projects. So we click here and then we go to the step. In this case is the step number, uh, sorry, five, five, no number four, number five. Launch a linear node and then download the blockchain. There it is. Congratulations if you made it, if you made it so far. It wasn't easy and you should be very proud of yourself. You really should. This was amazing. I woke up this morning to a comment of a follower on mine on YouTube who said that yesterday he tried to build the Cardano node and he failed and then he tried again last night and this morning he woke up very happy because the Cardano node was finally built. So he's eagerly waiting for the next episode to be released. So uh, I'm doing this for you. As soon as I saw your message, I was like, I have to release the next episode today because this guy is really making myself proud and I'm really proud of him uh, because he's really putting the effort of going through this episode, series of episodes. So let's, r let's run uh, the Cardano node in relay mode. So the first thing that I want to remind you is that we will only do this for testnet. We will create a stake pool in testnet. We will launch it and we will have it running for a couple of weeks until the first, uh, um, uh, what's it called? The first block is created. Um, so bear with me. And we will not do mainnet because I will need to spend 500 ADA that at the moment is $500. And uh, because this doesn't really give us any advantage um, so we'll be doing this only for testnet, but the steps are exactly the same for both the mainnet and testnet. The only difference is that in mainnet, mainnet you actually need real money and real ADA and not test ADA. Anyway, let's, let's go back to our uh, tutorial. So the first thing that we have to do is to uh, create a folder in which we will have to save our um, uh, blockchain. I should have mentioned this earlier on, this is the first part of the tutorial where you can actually start to be a little bit uh, uh, um, autonomous and may take your own decision, decisions. Um, because for instance, uh, this folder can be anything you want. I am just putting this one here for easiness sake. But you could, instead of using your Ubuntu folder, you can use anything else. Uh, I decided to go this way because this is the way I run tests. And it's very handy for me. I have two folders, one for testnet, one for mainnet. They are both in my um, um, ordinary uh, Ubuntu um, users because for handiness sake, is just uh, handy to have it there. Um, the next thing that you can customize, I'm gonna just briefly mention it here now, instead of spending time later, is the port number. 
uh, that is basically the port number at which the Cardano node will be exposed so that whenever we will be launching an actual block producing node, uh, the remainder of the blockchain will have to talk to our block producing node and this is the port number on which uh, the connections will be issued. So this number that for me is the 30,001 uh, can be uh, anything you really want. Uh, as long as then, and you will see this in a couple of episodes time, this one is matching uh, the port number on which uh, we're going to be forwarding requests. This is a little bit more of an advanced topic, but all I want to say is that um, there are a couple of things like the folder here and then the port number that you will have to customize yourself. Like there is no real uh, best thing for this. So you can use your imagination uh, to come up with a proper one. So without further ado, let's start with those steps. We are back on our Raspberry Pi here. Uh, I'm going to be creating the folder as mentioned earlier on. This is surprisingly taking long. There we go. Just done it. CD, 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 Cardano node. Oops. And I'll check inside testnet, check inside empty. The next thing that we do is to check out, and uh, I, I'm definitely sure that at this point you have the project checked out. So, what we do is a good practice just to ensure that there aren't um, updates to the project. We just uh, change it into the project, we pull the latest version, and you can see there are changes. So we, we bring them in. Uh, here are only changes to the documentation, so it means that the scripts have been uh, every mind unchanged, but it's good from time to time to update the project if your following is sticking exactly to the same commands I have. Um, uh, people among you that are a little bit more uh, experienced and over time as, as you get more experience with this I'm pretty sure you will be evolving those scripts yourself uh, in order to customize them to your uh, habits and to your uh, specific uh, uh, approach so yeah the next thing now is like as simple as that we're ready ready to launch the Cardano node so before uh, issuing the command let's very briefly check this uh, uh, sorry, this, uh, what is this script about? So we're gonna go back here and then we go into the Cardano node here and then here there is the run node. The run node is basically just a little script that has two way, two modes, relay mode and BP mode, where BP is a block producing mode of running the Cardano node. Cardano node is nothing else than, uh, uh, where is it? Cardano node is the actually CLI. This is basically the binary that we've built into Docker and we are sending uh, a lot of uh, some information with it. But let's go from the top. So first, first of all, because I'm doing this for both my laptop that is um, an Intel uh, uh, processor, so normal x86, uh, 64, um, and I have also ARM Raspberry Pi, I need to just capture what is the, um, the architecture of the operating system. This is doing this. Then I'm using node version 126.0. Reality is that like a couple of hours before 126.1 was released. For the purpose of the tutorial, I'm gonna stick with 126.0, but bear in mind that in a couple of hours, I'm gonna be re-updating everything and switch to 126.1 as well, because possibly that's the version that is gonna go live. So <laughs> I'm really sorry with my friend that just managed to build this last night. You will have to do that again with 126.1. Anyway, another two important things that I was telling you that you can customize is the DB folder and the Cardano node port. Uh, the DB folder, it's important already now to specify a good one because that's the one that you're going to be reusing. While the Cardano node port is very easy, you can switch it, and it's actually not necessarily required now, but will be very useful when we switch the node into the block producing node. Then there are two more additional information that is the network. The default one is mainnet. In fact, you see that in the script I'm specifying testnet instead. And then the block produce and the, um, the node mode. Uh, this is a, a customized customization of my script. In this case, I'm defaulting to relay, but you may need to launch this in block producing mode. And this is going to be clear again along with this information in the uh, not in the next, but in the episode after the next one. Most important thing is that for the script to properly work in the B folder in Cardano node port, they must be specified otherwise the cardano node will be unusable so and that's the reason why of those two checks then there is a very quick um, echo line that tells you how you're starting the node and this is just to be sure that you're launching the node in the proper way and then here is the actual script that launches the node so let's very briefly check out the relay part 
there is again another message that says starting the node in relay mode a little slip just in case um, you were wrong so you can control c and block before the actual docker image is launched and then you can update your configuration and launch the script in a different way uh, i will not go through the bad, like the all the details of these scripts because it's going to take an hour all that i want to say is that and this is the important bit is that the docker image comes with the, some uh, configuration as recommended from the cardano foundation so the topology json the config json these are things that we may periodically from time to time refresh and update and um, you just don't care about this thing at this moment this is all pre-baked for you so that you can get up and running in no time and um, so this is this is actually the real real command that is actually launched docker is just wrapping all this thing for you and creating a layer a layer of abstraction so the actual command is cardano run and the topology is available here we're going to be using the network name to pick up the correct topology the database is slash dp this is just a convention you don't need to know this neither change this because this is all inside the, the container it's not outside the container so we don't care the host address needs to be 0000, 000, 000 otherwise it will not be able to receive incoming connections this is a, a network specific thing explaining this will take a couple of hours or so just take it as an assumption just stick 0000, 000, 000, 000 that's the correct value and you will never need to change this the cardano port is actually parameterized we've been talking about this earlier on and this is actually important for when uh, we're going to be building i don't know a cli or an application that will need to talk to relay node this is the port that we need for us that we only care about creating a block producing node this is the same thing that we have here and this is required in order to make our block producing node to be reachable by the, the rest of the blockchain and so be able to be connected to the rest of the blockchain last but not the least the parameter that sets the configuration file these are a, a, a ton of uh, flags for the block producing node where we are saying the amount of logging the type of logging um, um, and many other information about the blockchain this can this, this is again pretty much the same as the one downloaded from the official cardano documentation now that we basically this this second part we will discuss it when we discuss about the block producer node but you can see many similarities topology and um, the configuration the port the socket but of course we will see the three keys or certificates that must be used in order to have a fully functional block producing node we can go back to the documentation now very quickly and we will finally launch our cardano node where were we there we go so the last command that we have to run is actually this one so this script it's uh, uh, also running the block producing node uh, the, uh, into inside the docker container but in a detached or daemon uh, way so it means that whenever we issue this command it's gonna block for a couple of seconds and then basically detach and that means that we can do whatever the hell we want after that this is the slip five then a few seconds and then you see the we get control back to our uh, terminal so the first thing that to to care about is that all this block that is here is just basically um, what commands are executed inside the container i told you that there's going to be a little slip just to check what we're doing started the real started the node into relay mode so this is the first thing the first message we are starting in relay mode so we know that this is not a block producing node and will not create and will not mean the blocks Another important thing to say is to that the architecture is the ar correct active architecture. This is node version, and this is the image tag that we are using. And this is exactly the one that we built last night, I want to say, or in the previous episode. And then the network in this case is very important that we are doing this on testnet. So you have also information about this now. These are environmental variables that are set, but are currently not used. Also, this is telling us that the folder uh, where we are uh, persisting the blockchain is this one and the port is this one. So um, many other information. And then there is this weird long string down here. This is actually really nice that we're seeing this one because this is the ID, the identifier, identifier of the container that is actually just started with the, with the uh, Cardano node inside. So very slowly, let's see what is going on. I'll change into the... Uh, home folder is not necessary but this is going to give free a little bit of space into my terminal so the first thing that we do is is anything running in docker so we do our all usual very well known docker ps so we do docker ps and something is going on so if you see this and you do ctrl c and ctrl f you would see this is exactly the beginning of this very long string 
So this container that is running is exactly the one that we just launched. So something is running, good. But now we want to know, first of all, what the hell is going on here because we can't see logs. And this is also very, uh, so, uh, very easy to do. Bear in mind that all this information that I'm telling you, they're also written into the documentation. So you can follow the doc or follow the video, but the reference into the document is exactly what I'm saying. I'm just not switching back and from, uh, forth from now on because uh, I'm gonna have an organic discussion with you. So we've done our Docker PS. The Docker, if this is still running, it tells you how long this has been going on. So what we can do now is to ask Docker to, con to, con to connect our console to the docker logs this is very simple i can do docker logs and then i'll tell it the name of the container this is gonna tell me the last batch of docker of sorry of log lines that was produced by the uh, docker uh, container so we see that the last slot was 4wine78 so if i do this again we'll see a different slot number what the hell is going on into the logs it's very very simple we have just started to download the blockchain and these are logs on logs on logs of all the blocks that have been generated in the past. So do you want to know where are we at with our logs? So let's do this one one more time because in these few seconds, few more blocks have been downloaded and not minted. We are downloading the blockchain again from the network. So we'll do this one again. So we need this tip. Basically tip is not the tip of the restaurant, but it's the, the head of the blockchain that we've managed to download so far. There is a website. Actually, there are two websites. One is the, uh, I'm gonna increase a little bit the character here. One is the explorer.cardano.iohk dev, that is the official explorer of Cardano blockchain of the mainnet. Or you can use this one, it is explorer.cardano-testnet, that is the testnet that we are working now. So if I want to search for a specific block number, this is the hash of the block number. I'm gonna just put this one here in the search box and then press the search button. And this is the result of the block. And we can see that this block was created on the 25th of July, 2019. Yeah, a good year and a half ago at 11 o'clock. So if I do this one again, in this few seconds, I'm sure that uh, now the tip has changed and we will be a little bit further in the time. So this is already the 26th of July, it was 19, a week of blocks have been downloaded. So you do realize that it's gonna take a while and even longer is gonna take if you're downloading ma mainnet because of course in mainnet there is the blocks are a little bit bigger and the amount of information you will have to download is a little bit bigger. Also there are many more transactions, that means the downloading the blockchain for testnet is going to be at least two, three times faster than mainnet. Thank God, because it means that for the purpose of this uh, tutorial, my blockchain is going to be downloaded much, much faster. So uh, there isn't a way of saying, there isn't a one command I can issue to understand that the full blockchain is downloaded. What I have to do is to come back in, I don't know, a couple of hours or four hours, or I go to bed and tomorrow morning I'll check I'll SSH again into my Raspberry Pi and I'm gonna go like Dogger Logs, uh, Dogger Logs, Cardano node, and then I'll take this one and I'll see. Is it today's date? No, it's not. So only if you see that this time is actually matching today's time, that is 30th of March at two, at one past the two, then it means that I'm caught up with the blockchain. Otherwise, this is still uh, running. One important thing is to ensure first, when you come back in four hours time, so let's say that I'm exiting uh, from the Raspberry Pi, I'll turn on my laptop later on in one hour, I'll SSH into the, the Raspberry Pi again, Raspberry, um, and say, right, I can't type my password. Boom. So look, I'll, I'll check the logs first. But maybe there is a problem and then if you do this six or seven times and you always see that the, the slot that is printing it is the same. Well, that could mean that the node is crashed. So what we have to do again, guess what? It's Docker PS and check if the Cardano node is running. Uh, so if it is not running, it means we have to start it again. We will see later on how to ensure that uh, whatever you want to run is constantly running. So if by any chance the Cardano node crashes, it gets automatically restarted. This is 
a goal of a different um, episode. We'll see this from someone else. The important thing here is to ensure that the node is running and is downloading the blockchain. So we are very close to the end of this episode. So do you want to see where the blockchain is and how it looks like? Well, it's not going to be really exciting, but it's worth to check where the, uh, where the blockchain is being downloaded. So we go back into our home folder that is it's easy just to print a CD and this is going to change to your home directory. And then we see that there is a nice Cardano node folder. So we change into Cardano node and then we issue ls.lart. Ah, this is testnet. So we, we do ct testnet and we do ls.lart. So this is what it looks like a blockchain download. There are several folder. There is a ledger, there is immutable, there is volatile, and there is node socket. We will find more about this later on. But if you want to talk uh, to, the, to, the, to the node, you have to use this socket. In fact, it's a, just a, a Unix stuff magic thing. And then, yeah, that's it. And if you curious to know how big this thing is, actually, I'm going to do from the lower upper level, du minus gms star. So far, we only have downloaded uh, eight megabytes. So this gonna take a lot of time. Still running. Fail. So also, if you um, if you want to continuously listen for the logs, what you can do is instead of just doing uh, uh, Docker logs, you can uh, put a dash f. I think just lowercase f. Cardano node testnet. This is basically going to connect with the logs and just stay connected and print all the logs as they come in. So it's not just like um, to fetch the latest logs, but it's going to basically be uh, connected to it. And with this one, I'm going to stop this one here and then I will briefly recap from the beginning of the next episode once that uh, the uh, blockchain has been downloaded. There is no reason why you should stop this thing from running until the next episode. This could be a good exercise to keep your Pi up and running and see the difference of uh, uh, actually, uh, let's see what is the load. So the load is pretty high. We are using 50% uh, of our um, processor capability. And um, actually, I don't know how to check this. So I'll go on uh, one second exit and then Raspberry. In the, I am sure, I think this is wrong again. I'm sure there is a way of gathering this information as well in a different way. But look, it's really nice to see whenever you SSH into your box that you know the current system load, the, system, the maximum system load that the Raspberry Pi can comfortably handle is uh, four, because there are four cores of which two real, two virtual. The usage of the memory is actually really good. Uh, big, sorry, this is usual of the disk, it's very good, like under 10%. And then uh, memory use, temperature is, Jesus, that's really, really high. It's a 64, 65 uh, degree. So the Pi is working really hard. I think it can comfortably work until 80, but 65 is definitely high. So if you have, uh, if you are any higher than this, you might consider to use a fan or something just to chill and cool a little bit the Pi down. And uh, and yeah, I think uh, there is definitely a way of reading this information somewhere else. I may, if I remember, I'll check that out and I'll let you know in the next episode. So I guess this was, was way, way longer than I wanted really to be. If you just stick to the uh, instructions, this is gonna be like a five minutes job, but it was nice just to give you a little bit more information about what the hell is going on here. So before wrapping up, I just want to remind you who am I. My name is Giovanni. Um, if you follow me on Twitter, I am uh, CryptoJo11. A couple of people have been uh, asking me, were actually surprised when they found out I have uh, two Telegram, Telegram groups as well, one of which is in English, another one is in Italian. So if you go on my Twitter profile, that is definitely into the description, um, you can then go on my profile and find uh, all the links to all my... Uh, uh, social media, uh, but you will find my telegram channel both Italian and English also in the description descri description of this video So before uh, uh, Giving you my goodbye, please don't forget to subscribe and slap the like button 
Um, if you enjoy what you're seeing, uh, please consider uh, delegating to my stake pool, as I am a stake pool operator of, of course, a Raspberry Pi pool. The ticker is easy one. Um, I would love to see uh, many more people in my pool as there is plenty of space and plenty of delegation. Thank you very much and I'll see you to the next episode. Bye.